The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Who is this King of glory? How shall we call him? He is Emmanuel, the promised of ages. The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge your sin, our sins in order to prepare ourselves to celebrate in these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Emmanuel, God with us. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Savior of the world. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May the Lord forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the childbearing of the Holy Virgin graciously revealed the radiance of your glory to the world, grant, we pray, that we may venerate with integrity of faith the mystery of so wondrous an incarnation, and all we celebrate with due reverence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Judges. There was a certain man named Zorah of the clan of the Danites, whose name was Mona. His wife was barren and bore no children. An angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Though you are barren and have no children, you will conceive and bear a son. Now then, be careful to take no wine or strong drink and eat nothing unclean. As for the son you shall conceive and bear, no razor shall touch his head. For this boy is to be consecrated to God from the womb. It is he who will begin the deliverance of Israel from the power of the Philistines. The woman went and told her husband, A man of God came to me. He appeared. He had the appearance of an angel of God, terrible indeed. I did not ask him where he came from nor did he tell me his name. But he said to me, You will be with child and bear a son. So take neither wine nor strong drink, and eat nothing unclean. For the boy shall be consecrated to God from the womb until the day of his death. The woman bore a son and named him Samson. The boy grew up, and the Lord blessed him, and the Spirit of God stirred him. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, and I will sing your glory. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, and I will sing your glory. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. For you are my rock, my fortress. O God, rescue me from the hands of the wicked. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, and I will sing your glory. For you are my hope, O Lord, my trust, O God, from my youth. On you I depended from birth. From my mother's womb you are my strength. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, and I will sing your glory. I will treat the mighty works of the Lord, O God. I will tell of your singular justice. O God, you have taught me from my youth, and till the present I proclaim your wondrous deeds. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, and I will sing your glory. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. O root of Jesse's stem, 
and sign of God's love for his people, come to save us without delay. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the priestly division of Eva. His name was from the daughters of Aaron, his wife was from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both were righteous in the eyes of God, observing all the commandments, the ordinances of the Lord blamelessly. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren, and both were advanced in years. Once when he was serving as priest and his divisions turned before God, according to the practice of the priestly service, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord to burn incense. Then the whole assembly of people was praying outside at the hour of the incense offering. The angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right of the altar of incense. Zechariah was troubled by what he saw, and fear came upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, because your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you will name him John, and you will give, and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He will drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb, and will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. He will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of fathers toward children and the disobedient to the understanding of the righteous to prepare a people fit for the Lord. Then Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel said to him, Reply, I am Gabriel who stand before God. I was sent to speak to you and to announce to you his good news. But now you will be speechless and unable to talk until the day of these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which would be fulfilled at their proper time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and were amazed that he stayed so long in the sanctuary. But when he came out, he was unable to speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary and he was gesturing to them, but remained mute. Then, when his days of ministry were completed, he went home. At this time, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and she went into seclusion for five months, saying, So has the Lord done for me at a time when he has seen fit to take away my disgrace before others. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So has, the Lord, so has the Lord done for me at a time when he has seen fit to take away my disgrace before others. Back in biblical times, infertility was considered a curse. By many, it was considered a punishment by God because of some sin or some sin of one of their ancestors. And so we have here Zechariah and Elizabeth, both advanced in years, both thought to be infertile, and then the Lord graced them or granted them their desire, their prayer for a child. And this child was John the Baptist. What's interesting about the encounter between the angel and Gabriel, the angel Gabriel, as name is mentioned here, is really just like that encounter that Gabriel had with Mary, the mother of God. At first, when the angel appeared, both Mary and Zechariah, as the scriptures say, were filled with fear. And in both times, the angel said, 
do not be afraid. I think oftentimes when we encounter the divine, when we encounter that heavenly realm, our first response is fear. And I think it's fear because we know we are unworthy to be in God's presence. We are unworthy to be in holy places. Because every time we go there, we think of our sins, we think of our past. And that brings fear to us. And yet, every time someone was afraid in the scriptures, if it wasn't an angel, it was Jesus himself who said, do not be afraid. The encounter of Zechariah and of Mary seems to be very similar. They both seem to question, well, how could this be? Zechariah, though, wasn't quite as looking for a response that Mary was, because Mary believed. She trusted. She hoped. She said yes. Zechariah, of course, questioned, but then he gave all these reasons why that could not happen. And because of that, because he refused to believe Gabriel, he was mute. And he was mute until the day that John was being presented to the Lord. And his first words are, his name is John. It is these beautiful readings as we prepare ourselves for the nativity of Jesus, for his birth, his breaking into time to end the darkness of our world. So yes, today's lesson is very simple. Number one, do not be afraid. There is so much fear in this world. And God just gently says to us, I'm here. There's nothing to fear. I am your God. And secondly, the lesson should be that we should be like Mary. We should believe. We should trust. We should hope. And we should say yes to God. Because as God tells us, we have nothing to fear. Let us place our needs before God. We pray for the church throughout the world that the Lord may find us watchful and waiting for his return. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our world leaders that they will lead us to the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our own nation that we may be a people who are dedicated to human life from the moment of conception to natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray today for those who will be alone this Christmas, for those who perhaps will be in hospitals or in senior conditions. We pray that the true light of the world will break any darkness in their hearts and any fear or worry. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who are sick and suffering, that they may be healed by Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who have died. May they be welcomed into heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember the intentions of today's liturgy. We pray for the deceased members of the Cerniak family, for Anita McPolin, and for James Brick, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all your needs, all your intentions that we bring to the altar today in the very silence of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love and mercy, hear these our prayers. Grant them that they are your will, for they are made in the name of Jesus as he lives and he reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise, the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we lay upon your altar, that what we bring, despite our weakness, may be sanctified by your power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with a love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a wave of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The dawn from on high will visit us, guiding our feet into the ways of peace. And let us pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. As we give thanks, Almighty God, for these gifts you have bestowed, graciously rouse in us, we pray, the desire for those yet to come that we may welcome the nativity of our Savior and honor it with minds made pure. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Go, announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lowly exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. O come, O day spring from on high, and cheer us by your 
drawing nigh. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadow put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O 